Someone made a comment recently on one of my videos, basically saying that I give too much credit to the capability of big tech. They're not as powerful as I make them seem, he says. I don't have to worry about them, he says. Well, that guy is wrong. Because I understand the technology and how it works, I can project not only the current capability, but the future capability. And this is the premise we will examine today. We will examine artificial intelligence or AI, or what I will just refer to often as the machine. We will examine machine learning algorithms. Big Tech is heavily focused on AI and improving machine learning techniques. If you actually understand how machine learning works, you will realize, as I have, that I do not foresee the limits of AI right now. It will definitely exceed the human brain capacity and sooner than you think. So with this privacy battle that I'm leading today, tomorrow will be a new question. Will you control the AI or will the AI control you? The similarity to the Skynet in the Terminator movies is going to be quite apparent. Stay right there. The average person looks at the current environments and says, Ah, technology is not that advanced yet. We don't have to worry. They're seeing videos of the progression of the robots at Boston Dynamics. They're pretty good, but they look like toys. They're seeing Elon Musk's company Neuralink, which is working to connect your brain directly to devices with a brain implant. They're seeing Tesla seeming to drive cars, but not perfectly yet. They're seeing the AI interject in real life with an AI concierge or an AI tech support. Well, the AI is difficult to work with, or the AI used to moderate content on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. Well, they're not really good at content moderation. Some human has to review the results. We see lots of limitations. What we don't see is how quickly we have moved from nothing on AI and in 10 years we are doing things we cannot fully imagine outside of science fiction stories. Well, we have to take this out of the science fiction realm. We have to understand how the machine learns and if this learning can eventually be a threat to us. I did a recent video on how the AI sees objects. If you want to delve deeper technically into how the AI sees with a camera, you should watch that video, which I will link up here. This time I will just make a summary statement to explain how things work. First, the starting premise. Yes, machines can learn. In fact, machine learning is a specialized field in computer science. What is interesting is how the machines learn. It's not exactly how humans learn. And machines have additional capability beyond simply learning that makes more complex learning possible compared to humans. They have a memory that can be practically limitless. They have instant access to huge databases of information that we humans have to take the extra step to research. Machines do not need a camera to learn. Although our initial impression of AI is like a Tesla with a camera watching the road, or some facial recognition program recognizing Jason Bourne at an airport, cameras are just a way to supply data to the machine. The machine can be supplied data through any source. It could be listening to all sounds in the world and converting it digitally. It could be listening to radio frequencies. It could be sent binary data from some other sensor like the articulating arm of a robot. To the machine, data is data. Doesn't matter where it comes from and how it is represented. And all data is converted to some digital form, just a bunch of numbers. Photos are converted to numbers. Sound is converted to numbers. Data representing the natural world is represented in numbers. And what is interesting about machine learning is that it doesn't matter what's being represented by the data. Machine learning does not actually know the difference in the context between sound data versus visual data versus motion data. Machine learning is based on a simple premise. It looks for patterns and patterns are always digital. And the patterns are determined by math. Nature, of course, is based on infinite variations and infinite patterns. No one has exactly the same face. Cats don't always appear in the same position. 
Dogs come in different breeds. Animals are constantly moving. Yet a machine can recognize them. Even on YouTube, the AI can see the individual element in each video frame. If, for example, I have an object here that would fall in their list of banned items, then the video would be content moderated. So yes, the machine finds patterns in the data, but it might see that the patterns are unlimited and therefore cannot make sense of what it sees. But we humans can see things and make immediate decisions about what is around us. So how does a machine replicate this behavior? Well, in simple terms, the machine is able to find similarities in patterns. Instead of looking for exactness, the machine looks for something repeatable, but instead of looking at a 100% match, it looks for something close. And it measures how close the characteristic is by a probability value. So for example, if you feed a machine a million photos of cats and state that there is a cat there, the machine can then look for something in that set of millions of photos that might characterize a cat. Humans will interpret this as cat noses, cat whiskers, cat paws, cat ears, cat eyes, cat fur, cat tails, and so on. But a machine just sees numbers. And so the machine looks for patterns in a completely different way than humans. And this in itself offers a completely different level of learning than humans. We can look for patterns in broad strokes in our environment using our human eyes and senses. But a machine can see much more. It can see more patterns in the data and it can process this data without missing anything. As long as you can provide the machine the data, the machine can potentially observe things better than a human can. The way a machine can figure out similarities in what it sees in the data is based on mathematics. And some computer techniques help in this too. For example, rather than seeing one whole data stream of a photo, a machine will split photos up into seemingly repeating number patterns that we can visualize as bordering rectangles in photos. This is part of the computer techniques in machine learning that are the basis of the algorithms used. The actual learning is based on some simple components. First, the machine has to identify patterns, patterns that characterize the object being identified. The more advanced the machine, the more of these characteristics it can observe simultaneously. The ability to observe the collection of characteristics is called a neural network. Each individual characteristic is processed by a neuron. So the more neurons is given to the machine, the more things it can use to identify what it is observing. A more advanced AI would be able to recognize cats and dogs even when in positions where the animal is not completely visible because it looks for more characteristics. The next aspect of the AI, which can be perceived as a limitation, is that in order to learn the distinctions between what it sees in the world and the recognition of objects in the world, we need to give the machine lots and lots of data and bigger computers to process all that data. It would take many millions of photos to inform the AI sufficiently so it can recognize a cat even if it sees only the back body of the cat or know that it is not a tiger or a bobcat. Aside from the amount of data required to ensure a high accuracy in the AI, there is always a need for someone to classify what is being observed. Meaning the machine is fed lots of photos and is told it is a cat. If no one is around to tell the machine it is a cat, it cannot classify the pattern and so nothing is achieved. It will never know what a cat is. This, however, as we will discuss, is not necessarily a limitation to the machine in the future. So let's look at the current state of AI machine learning in the world and observe the flaws. Let's go to the Boston Dynamics robot. If you watch the videos on the progress of the robot projects over the years, you can see how the robot movements have evolved. You can see how the machines move more smoothly now. Let's say the goal is for the robot to stay upright on two legs. Humans automatically balance our weight constantly along our entire body and we stay upright. Robots are first given rudimentary instructions on how to balance and then some semblance of stability is achieved. If they move in an unstable position, they fall. And the person programming the machine tries again by giving instructions so the machine corrects its position so it doesn't fall. 
I'm sure the early robots were programmed using instructions on how to handle certain positions in order to stay upright. Today, I'm certain the robot makes decisions based on AI, meaning the robot decides for itself how to stay upright. It did this by learning. How does a machine learn without human input? Well, it knows the outcome. In the case of a robot, if it falls down, then that's a fail, in which case it can remember when it failed and not to handle that situation in that particular way. Given enough repetitions, a machine would self-learn which action has the best results for balance, and it can learn that by itself. This is an important point. If the machine AI can see the outcome on its own, then it can learn on its own. Teaching a machine to balance itself is no different than teaching the machine to recognize a cat. This is the equivalent of saying if it falls down, it is not a cat. If it stays upright, it is a cat. The difference is only in the sensors. Positional data is based on position sensors and sensors on each joint of a leg. In contrast, a cat is recognized using cameras, which provide a photo with pixels. Data is data. But the way a Boston Dynamics robot self-learns to stay upright is not the same as learning to recognize a cat using human input. The standard way we think machines can learn is when a human sternly talks to the machine and says, bad dog, and then the machine learns not to repeat that. For example, we think that the only way for a Tesla to not make driving mistakes is for a human to analyze a driving error with the self-driving AI and then tell the AI that it is a bad dog for making a lane change incorrectly. While this is initially true today, all the machine needs is some sort of indication of outcome. In other words, it can learn that it was a bad dog because of some consequence. In the case of an error of Tesla self-driving, the outcome can be the driver's attempt to override the move, specifically if the driving mistake is that the Tesla incorrectly goes to the wrong lane and the driver overrides that constantly, then the machine will quickly learn that it is making a mistake. This is without someone actually teaching it manually and saying, bad dog. Let's take this deeper now so you can understand how this projects to the future. So far, I've said that machines learn by being fed data, and then a human must supply a definition or classification of the data. If I'm giving the machine a million photos to examine, I'm saying to the machine that that is a cat. So the machine blindly follows the instruction that it has to assume what it's looking at is a cat. But is there another way the machine can learn? Yes, and this has deeper implications, which matches the terminology too. It is called deep learning. The way deep learning works, the machine observes its own patterns. And instead of a human manually telling it that what it is seeing is a cat, the machine sees that the collection of patterns is repeatable. And then it can internally call it concept A123, whatever that is. In other words, it doesn't have to know it is a cat just some object it sees for itself. Now, there is a way for the AI to know that what it classifies as concept A123 is actually a cat. And this is the part we don't actually understand at all. If a machine has access to social media data, it will likely discover that concept A123 is present in a lot of YouTube videos and that it seems to correlate to the word cat. Again, this is the idea of self-learning. The machine can learn from us indirectly. We are feeding it learning data just by observing what we do. I hope you start to understand what I'm saying here, which is as deep a concept as deep learning is. If the machine can have some way of learning the outcome of its action with some data it can observe on its own, then it can learn from us and learn without limitation. The way the machines can learn from us is from what we have posted in social media, in cloud photo storage, in comments, in Facebook and Instagram posts, in TikTok videos. We are giving information to the machine to learn about our society 
and from this the machines can potentially self-learn as long as they have access to the data our data there's another way for machines to learn about us and our data directly and that is through robots soon robots will be commercially available and common and we will be interacting with them this is no longer science fiction the problem is that robots provide a way for the machine to also collect information from its environment and generate its own idea of outcome. A Robocop could learn from its interaction with people and learn from its sensors. A robot gate card could be watching for suspicious characters entering an airport and could learn which ones are dangerous based on the reaction of the suspected person. So the move to common robotics or, or even the semi-robotic function of your iPhones or your Teslas can make the AI learn about us and without someone directly teaching it. Just like the machine can learn from people driving their Teslas or even learning from the past driving records of people driving Teslas. I know what the naysayers are thinking. This guy exaggerates. We can't even get a Tesla to drive a few minutes without it making a mistake. Ha. Ah. Patience, grasshopper. The AI's limit in learning is based on observations over time. In other words, the more observations, the more data, the better it learns. If it hasn't learned to be close to perfect yet, give it time. Maybe it needs a few million more observations to come up with an answer. This is what I'm trying to make clear here. The machine learning algorithm is in existence. The ability to do deep learning is in existence. The capability for AI to self-learn by discovering its own outcomes through data it can observe is in existence. All it needs is time. Time to observe. Time to classify. There's another aspect of AI that we often see in robot movies. Machines can learn. Machines can learn beyond what humans can learn given enough time and computing power. Machines, if given a way to determine outcomes, can classify its own data and thus have the equivalence of human intelligence. But what's missing is the directive. What is the goal of the AI? What is the objective? And this is where you need to understand the power you are giving to the machine. It is not an issue of machine self-awareness, which is a debatable concept. But there are only a few companies working with machine learning AI in a big way. Google, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Palantir, Tesla. Basically, you are handing the power of AI to a few companies that constitute big tech. Boston Dynamics, by the way, is owned by Google now, in case you missed that. Companies like Facebook and Google have repeatedly stated that the singularity will be upon us. This term was used to describe a time when computers will be smarter than people. It is projected to occur between the 2030s to the 2040s. That's not very far away. The guy that invented the word singularity is Ray Kurzweil. What I'm talking about here is what he's working on. But now we're talking about robots, computers, networks, and systems that are operating globally and much smarter than people. And yet it's the people that's supposed to be electing government officials. People that's supposed to be running the world's infrastructure. People that's supposed to make decisions as many gears in a cog. But what we're talking about in the future is a future where the AI runs everything. Where our opinions can be swayed by the machine. Because the machines know how we think and how our emotions play out. The machine will know what triggers us. The machine can know how to disrupt us. How to lead us to certain choices like lemmings or sheep. Because it has learned our behaviors in our history. Today we worry about police doing racial or ethnic profiling to identify potential terrorists for example. I will tell you now that a machine has no emotion or feelings. It will profile a potential suspect mathematically. It could theoretically accept or reject job applications completely by the numbers. It could determine that a good society is one based on conformity and thus Non-conformists could be identified as the threats. Someday, the Robocop you encounter on the street will already know you are a threat. So movies are going to describe reality soon. Skynet will be real. 
I don't know if we can stop this world from coming to pass, but that's where the technology is headed. Technology where the most convenient thing can't be bad, where big tech companies have their fanboys and no one is here to analyze the consequences of their choices over the long term. I'm Rob Braxman, tech content creator, and I advise you on tech dangers. My company provides tools to counter the threat to us and society. If more and more people use these tools, then we can blunt the effects of big tech's overreach. We have a VPN product, Bytes VPN, a metadata-free email, Braxmail, and one of our new products is the Brax2 privacy phone, which allows you to use the phone without an identity. These products are on my store on Braxme. The link is in the description. I'm on a platform, odyssey.com. I'm now a top creator on there. I'm also on Rumble and being promoted by Rumble. In case I get the platform, please follow me on those platforms using the links in the description. See you next time.